If you are a real estate investor or you want to be a real estate investor and you need more money to fund your deals, regardless of your credit, regardless of your income, regardless of your experience in real estate investing, don't go anywhere because we're getting ready to tap you into the unlimited funding for your deals in just a moment. Well, welcome to the show, Real Estate Investing with Jay Connor. And I'm excited to have again with me is my co-host, Chaffee Wynn from Chicago. Hey Chaffee, how you doing? Hey Jay, doing awesome. How are you doing out there? <laughs> doing fantastic too. So uh, Chaffee, if someone is brand new to the show, tell them what we do here on the show and why they want to stick around with us for about uh, 20 minutes or so on today's show. Well, obviously Jay, you are the private money authority. So you show people how to get money to buy and sell real estate deals. Uh, and we talk about the whole real estate process from beginning to end, how to build your team, how to find deals, how to sell deals, how to uh, automate your business. So uh, definitely uh, tune in, subscribe, rate, all that fun stuff. So, uh, and uh, pay attention to the next 20 minutes. <laughs> exactly. So folks, we just promised you we we're going to plug you into the money. Uh, again, regardless of credit, income and experience, we're going to go ahead and put up the website right now that will give you access to what we're talking about. And Chaffee, then you know I can take a second and talk about uh, why to go to that website. So the website to get plugged into the funding for your deals is www.jayconner.com -E forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. So that's jayconner with an er.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. So folks, what that uh, URL will take you to is that's going to give you all the details about our upcoming live event to where we're going to have uh, uh, private lenders right at the uh, live event for you to network with. And a lot of the event, in fact, one of the three days uh, we focus on private money. So um, Kathy, why don't you take a moment and, and give the viewers and listeners a, um, and by the way, this event is free for you to come. There's a minimum $97 registration, uh, you know, charge, but I mean, it's a $2,997 event podcast viewers and followers. You get to come for free. Chavi, take a second and give them an overview of this event. So Jay, at this event, it's, uh, you got to get out there. If you're in real estate investing, you got to get out there. We have, not only do we have uh, new people, we have experienced people, people that have been in this industry for you know years and years that have done multiple deals. And why are they there? It's because they're out of money. And so uh, you're one of the few, if, if any, that teaches them to get the money first. And, yeah. and so we spend a lot of time covering how to get the money, how to raise the money so that you can do an unlimited number of deals. Um, and again, as, as I say, not only do you show them how to get the money, you show them uh, some of their strategies that you use to find the deals. Um, you show them how you negotiate those deals. You show them uh, the breakdown of how you fix the deals, uh, what you do to them, and then how you sell them in 72 hours or less. Exactly. So the entire process. And then on the last day, you go over the automation of your entire business as well. So how they can run this business uh, without running the business, because you have other people that you've worked with to and hired to run the business for you. Exactly. I mean, you know, this morning uh, I received uh, an email from uh, my realtor that I work with. My acquisitionist also got the same email. And so that was just a few short hours ago. Already my contractor has been there, already sent me a budget sheet. My realtor that I work with has already been there and viewed the property as well, has already given me an after repair value. And in a matter of like 15 seconds, I was able to calculate my maximum offer that I would make on the house. I've already communicated that to the realtor. And so we're waiting on the bank. It's a bank owned property. So that's an example of the importance of the relationships, Chaffee, that you just mentioned. Um, the first day on this event, um, we go on the bus tour. It's a bus tour. Unlike any other bus tour, we actually go out to our houses that are either under construction, I mean, under renovation, or they're finished and staged, ready for Southern Living Magazine pictures, or we haven't even started. And, you know, Chaffee, as you know, because Chaffee, you're at all my live events, right? That's right. And, you know, we go over how we found them, the numbers, exactly. And so the bottom line, as you mentioned, Chaffee, whether you're a brand new real estate investor and you've never done a deal, or you're a seasoned investor, and you want to learn some more strategies and of course get plugged into the funding, regardless of your credit, et cetera, definitely get to the event. 
So with that, let's do this show, Chaffee. Uh, Jay, did you tell them how to get to the event? What, where do they have to go to sign yep. up and everything? To the website. Yep. So okay. we've already got it already there on the video. Awesome. www.jayconner.com -E forward slash money podcast. All right, Chaffee, you get to decide today on the show what you want to talk about. Hit me, well, hit, Jay, hit me up. I, uh, you know, I'm a big believer that, um, while you can tell people what to do using real live examples and showing people the things that you've done are the things that stick with them the most. Right. And so, uh, you know, in, uh, some of the past bus tours, we've looked at some properties. Is there a property out there that we've looked at that you've done a deal that you can talk about so that, uh, they can see the real live example. Uh, not only did you show them only here's what happened and, and how it happened. Yeah. Well, um, of course, I've, what I've discovered after doing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of deals, <laughs> every property has got its own story. Now, mm -hmm. a lot of them are similar, but some of them are very different. So when you just mentioned the bus tour, uh, what came to my mind is a recent bus tour that we did right here in my area. Um, in fact, it was just a few short months ago. Uh, you'll recall I referred to it, Chaffee, as the farmhouse. You remember the farmhouse uh -huh. deal? Uh -huh. Farmhouse. Yep. So, so yeah, I'll be glad to share the story. A lot of lessons learned. It's not lessons learned, but there's a lot of lessons for me to share uh, from this story on this farmhouse deal. So the farmhouse, let me start. Well, I guess the, a very good place to start a story is at the very beginning, right? So. <laughs> So first let's talk for a moment about how I found the deal. All right. So I was doing uh, at the time a postcard campaign and the postcard was being mailed out to out of state owners. All right. Uh, I did on this particular campaign, I didn't put any other filters on the list. Uh, I'm doing right now. I just launched a new campaign that I'm testing. All right. This campaign is all out of state owners and with at least 30% equity. All right. So that weeds out all the people that I'm, that my uh, acquisitionist would talk to that they owe more or they owe as much as it's worth. Right. By, by the way, Jay, I, I do want to share that. Uh, what I, what I really love about you is that, you know, the things that you share are the exact things that you do. So when you, you know, are testing something, you'll tell people, Hey, I'm just still testing this. You're not telling them that it works or it doesn't work. You're like, I'm testing this. And then, you know, once you get the results, you share those results with the students as well. And, and why I love that is because it saves these students sometimes thousands and thousands of dollars that you're spending to test these strategies and techniques. You're doing it, you're testing it for them, for yourself, obviously, and for them and sharing that. So if it doesn't work, They've just saved all that money. And if it does work now, they know that they can invest in that and uh, see the results for themselves. Exactly. I'm glad you brought that up because, you know, the real estate investing, the real estate investing business is like any other business. It doesn't stay the same. Right. You know? That's why, that's why my students keep coming back to my live events because, and in our mastermind group, especially, we bring all these new techniques that, like I just said, I'm testing. And you know, what worked a year ago might not be working today, you know, because mar the market changes. So I'm glad you brought that up, Chavi. So yeah, I was doing a postcard campaign targeting out of state landlords, not landlords, out of state owners. So the people that could, that could be on that list would be, if they're an out of state owner, you know, perhaps the property is vacant. Now I've also done that list as well, Chaffee. I've done out of state owners and vacant. So two, you know, uh, motivating factors there, but I didn't put any other filters on this one. So um, the owner responded. So, so, so Jay, just real quick, if they're an out of state owner and the house isn't vacant, that means that they have a rental. Is that correct? Or typically, or what does that mean? Typically they either got a rental, uh, they've got a renter in it or, Maybe they've got a family member. Okay. In it. Now, if it's vacant, okay, if it's vacant, it could be like here in our area, it could be a secondary home. You know, it could be a vacation home. 
Yeah. And it stays vacant and they don't rent it out until they until they use it for their own uh, for their own, you know, for themselves. Right. So the owner of the property responded to the postcard. Now, the call to action on the postcard was we only gave one call to action on the postcard. And that was to, to just call, to just give us a call to I actually said, call Kim at this number. Kim's my acquisitionist. Call Kim. And so that phone number actually went to our answering service. All right. Here's why Kim sometimes may be talking to another seller and is on the phone and can't answer the phone. So this, this service that we have is a live operator at the service. And the, even if they hang up, we capture 100% of the phone numbers because our service, even though it's got one of our local numbers, it's driven by an 800 service and Chaffee, some of our viewers and listeners may not know that when your phone number is either an 800 number or an 877 number, toll free number, and that's what's driving it. And that's what they're really responding to, even though it may show us a local number, you cannot call her ID block. You cannot block an 800 number. So we get 100% of the phone numbers. Okay when someone calls in. So then of course, Kim uh, returns her call, texts them, does everything she can as quickly as possible to get the seller on the phone. Now, here's a very, very interesting beginning of this story. And that is Kim got the seller on the phone, or got the owner on the phone. Come to find out the owner lived in Chesapeake, Virginia. So we're here in Eastern North Carolina and the house had been vacant for something like three or four years at least. Um, and so he gave his initial numbers over the phone. He wanted $80,000 and it was free and clear, $80,000. Uh, got our realtor to do the research even before we go and look at it. And the after repaired value before we added a whole nother bedroom, I mean a whole nother walk-in closet and bathroom, and the after repaired value was going to be something like, 125,000, 130,000, something like that. And I said, well, those, those numbers are sounding pretty good. I don't know what the repairs are yet because we haven't been. So I was in town. So my acquisitionist and myself, we set a meeting and the owner comes down from the, uh, comes down from Chesapeake, meets us at the house. We walk through, this house is a wreck. Now, now that's not normal, Jay, right? That an out-of-state owner would come to the property and meet you and walk through it. You know, I'm closing on a, on a house this coming Monday and the people just contacted us just a few short days ago. They're driving down from Ohio to North Carolina for the closing. Bought another house not too long ago. The people, the owners are in the state of Washington. They didn't come to closing in North Carolina. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so it really sort of depends on how sure. far away they are, you know, kind of thing. So it, it goes both ways. It goes both okay. ways. I, I was a little surprised the people were coming all the way down from Ohio to tell you the truth. Um, but nonetheless, good question. So we met the owner there at the house. Um, and oh, oh my word. Oh my word. This house was built in 1945 out in the country on two acres plus of land. The, the house is not habitable. Um, it's never had central heat or central air in it. Um, the foundation, the, uh, it's on cinder blocks is the foundation. <laughs> and so, I mean, you just, I mean, the rooms are small. I mean, the layout is the old timey like farmhouse where there's a center part. Like you walk in the front door and there's no hallways. Hmm. There's no hallway. You walk in the front door, you got your living room. And then there in the center of the house is like a box. And off of this box is the bathroom. There's only one bathroom and three bedrooms and then come back around over here and there's the kitchen and that's it. So it's like a little house on the prairie, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And so I said to Kim, I said, you know, we're going to have, I'm going to have to get the contractor here to, you know, the contractor couldn't meet us on this initial visit. I said, see what you can get the seller down to before he drives back to Chesapeake. So she calls me up 
says we finished the visit. The lowest he'll go is sixty thousand dollars. I said, well, I can already tell you this ain't gonna be a deal. I mean, if I'm buying it at sixty and I got this huge rehab to do, probably gonna need to add another bathroom and a walk-in closet, and everything's got to be redone. The kitchen's got to be gutted. I mean, you know, it's, it's from start to finish. And so anyway, I got the contractor out there anyway, because here's what I'm leading up to, Chaffee and everybody. Because here's the deal. Here's the biggest lesson from this deal. The biggest lesson. And the lesson is, and then we'll get to the numbers in a second. The biggest lesson is, regardless of what the seller says is the least they'll take, you don't know, I don't know, and the seller doesn't know what they're going to do until you make the offer. All right. So even when they say, I'm not going a penny less than X, they just may not know how much lower they'll go until they actually have an all cash, no contingency, no, no, don't have to get approved for a loan, no appraisals, no inspections, clean offer. Now they, they already went from 80 to 60. 60. 80 so, to 60. So that's 80. their bottom line. That's, that's all they're going to take. <laughs> so I get the contract to go out there. And by the time we do all this rehab stuff, this is going to be an $80,000 rehab. So let's run those numbers real quick. If I got to buy it at 60 and I'm going to put 80 in it, I got 140 in it. And maybe the way I do it, you know, it's, it's going to appraise, you know, for what. So here's the, here's, here's the good news. I got two pieces of good news. So I got my realtor, to rerun the numbers. I said, look, here's what we're going to do upstairs because it had an unfinished upstairs at it. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to add a bathroom. I'm going to add a, you know, add a walk-in closet. We're gutting the kitchen, bringing it all up, but keeping the integrity of an old farmhouse, but everything's brand new. Okay. But it, you know, but we've got the rustic look. We're able to bring back the, 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 the pine floors in the living room and in the bedrooms. Bottom line, now the new after repaired value is going to be $175,000 after we do all this. Well, the 60 grand still doesn't work right, even at the right. 175. You know, I've got 145 in it by the time you buy it with closing costs, sell it with closing costs, there's still no spread. So we ran the numbers. I got back up with my acquisitions. I said, offer the seller $20,000. And she says, there is no way. I said, <laughs> well, first of all, we don't know that. And secondly, we must justify the offer. We must justify the offer to the owners. Uh, I am not trying to quote unquote, steal this house because now let's run the numbers. If I've got 20 in it and then I put 80 in it, I'm always going to have overruns, right? right and I'm going right. to have carrying costs. I don't know how long this house is going to sit before it sells. Uh, but I do know a really, really nice farmhouse in the country on two plus acres where you could put horses on it or whatever could be in high demand. So she makes the offer of 20,000. She justifies the offer. She tells the owners the repair costs. We don't know how much the carrying costs are going to be. And here's the minimum. Here's a big justification. The owner out of state, this is a non-performing asset. They're new, never moving back here. They've been renting it out for over 20 years. It's going to take a minimum of 25,000 plus just to get it habitable to rent it out. And how long is it going to take for them to get their 25 grand out by renting it out at whatever, $900 a month or even a thousand dollars a month kind of thing. Guess what? I bought the house for $20,000. All right. So 20, wow. I put 80 in it. Put it on the market um, at 175. I'll put it on the market on a Friday, on a Friday afternoon. By Sunday, we had multiple offers. We went under contract on Monday for 173 within $2,000 of list. And so, what are the lessons that you hear in that story, Chavi? Well, we went through that property before you listed it, right, Jay? Correct. We and weren't so the students with it on the bus tour. Yeah. And so the students got to see the finished product. Yes. And all that you did and everything with it. Um, so so they got to see the fact that you bought this property for twenty thousand, which was 
forty thousand below the lowest number they're going to take, right? Low. <laughs> and that's sixty thousand right. under their asking. So, right. I mean, that's, that's right. the huge question there is is or uh, lesson there is you never know what they're going to take, and as long right. as you can justify what you're offering, then uh, there the possibility is still there that they're going to take much less than um, you know what they want. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, the, you know, the other thing that comes along is back to the postcard campaign. Okay. So I would not have gotten that deal if I did not practice a very, very important uh, business practice that I have in my business. And that is consistent marketing, seeking motivated sellers. Absolutely. And on the average, uh, it takes 15 completed property lead sheets, and here's a lead sheet right here. I'm going to cover the people's name for the sake of confidentiality, but that's what a property lead sheet looks like. We get the information, we get the seller's information, you know, information about the property. We get the mortgage information in the case we can buy it subject to the existing note. And if you don't know what buying to the buying subject to the existing note is, um, get to the live event. I go into detail about that. So, you know, consistent marketing to have motivated sellers coming in uh, into what we call your pipeline or your funnel. And um, without the consistency, you know, you're going to be missing out on a ton of deals. Right, Jay? Yeah. Now, now I want to uh, point out that for you, Jay, it takes about 15 property lead sheets because you've refined your process. Right. Uh, you have your lead gen going out, you have your acquisitions, this, they know exactly how to ask those questions for a newer investor. It might take 25 or 30 or, or more property lead sheets before they actually refine their process and really understand how to negotiate those deals and get those deals done. That's correct. Um, and and in, for somebody else that's doing, you know, even more deals than you, Jay, that it might only take 10 lead sheets, right? So that's right. That's right. Exactly. That's a good point. That's a good point. Well, Chaffee, we're out of time on this podcast show. That's uh, that's the farmhouse deal story. And so uh, parting comments, uh, Chavi. Uh, you know, the parting comment is that, um, you know, as you said, every deal is going to be different. You know, we're going to show them at the boot camp how to analyze and process these deals. And as long as you follow that system that you use, Jay, which is, you know, the marketing for the leads, analyzing the deal and then making the offers and then working through that process, it, you know, every situation, while it may be different, We'll still follow that system, still follow that process, and you can still be profitable. Exactly, exactly. And listen, uh, everybody, if you are watching us on uh, or listening to us on iTunes or any other audio, um, uh, please subscribe uh, and rate and review. Uh, we really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube or any other video, uh, again, please subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the uh, content that we're coming out with. We're doing three shows a week now and uh, on YouTube, give us a thumbs up. All right. Please uh, like our, the video and of course leave comments uh, below and any questions that you have, uh, we'll get, uh, you know, on real estate investing, we'll get your, get answers to your questions. So uh, with that, Chavi, thank you again for joining me here on the show. Thank you for having me. All right. And I'll see you at the upcoming mastermind meeting. And right after that, the live event. So it's just a few days away, folks. So go right on over now to www.jayconner.com forward slash all in lowercase money podcast. So look forward to seeing you at the upcoming live event. And again, thank you for tuning in. And here's to taking your business to the next level. I'm Jay Conner, the Private Money Authority, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.